Hello, this is Scott White from Glasshouse Home Safety. Today I bring you a video that I believe would quite possibly shock you and so it should. When we're talking about the life safety of your family, your home occupants, how would you like to know if the smoke alarm that you believe is working and you've even had a testing company tick the box to say it is, what if it isn't? The likelihood is that if it's a particular type of smoke alarm, it's not working and it's not going to save your lives. In order to understand the different types of smoke alarms, you need to understand the stages of a fire. There's four stages of a fire. There's an incipient stage where it sort of smoulders for a little while and builds up a little bit of heat, puts off a bit of smoke. Then there's a growth stage where it really starts to build up, puts out a lot more smoke, builds in a lot more heat, and then it reaches this flash over stage where flame comes and uh, then it, the, the fourth stage is, is uh, decay, where it dies off. Now, the, uh, by the time the flame is there, you've normally got at best about 15 seconds to get out of the home. So obviously the earlier the warning, the better. Now, if you want to get out, especially if you're sleeping. Now, um, the most common home fires that kill people, oh, well, the, the most common house fire is in the kitchen, but it's normally when people are around and they can respond to it and, and react to it. That isn't what kills people in homes. What kills people in homes is smouldering fires that build up while people are sleeping. Now, the photo-optical, there's two types of smoke alarms, photo-optical and ionisation. The photo-optical type of alarm does exactly as the, the name says, it's optical, it sees, it literally sees the smoke. It has a little chamber that air passes through and when smoke particles get in there and obscure the light going from one side of the chamber to the other, it sees it and starts screaming its head off and hopefully well in advance of the flame stage. That's what a photo optical one will do, well in advance of the flame stage. Now they're the ones, so there's been many, many different authorities, including the uh, Queensland Fire Service, that have recognised that um, the other type, ionisation type, are not the ones that are preferred. I'll get to that. But for now, if you build a new home, you've got to put in photo opticals. If you have a smoke alarm that fails, fails to test, or is over 10 years old, you've got to replace it with a photo optical. If you do uh, substantial renovations um, on a home now, you've got to put in photo opticals. By 2022, if you lease a home or sell a home, it has to have photo opticals in it. And by 2027, all homes should have only photo opticals in them. So it's pretty clear that they've worked out that photo opticals are the only ones that work properly for the most common fire. Now, let me explain why. The ionisation type alarm is one that was invented with a radioactive um, chamber and it senses ionised particles. Um, it was developed and, and sold on the false pretense that it could see invisible smoke. It's an out and out lie. It doesn't see any smoke whatsoever. In fact, it's not even a smoke alarm. It's a product of combustion alarm. Now, why does that make it so unsafe? Why does that make it the killing thing that it is? Well, there's a number of different reasons. The first and most obvious one is that the false sense of security you're lulled into 
thinking that your smoke alarm works beautifully because every time you cook toast or cook a meal a bit too far, it goes off. How common is that? Everyone knows someone that talks about their alarm going off while they're cooking. That's an ionisation alarm. Because it picks up the product of combustion, the actual toast, um, the heating element in the toaster burning, in effect. But um, for, a, for the most common type of, alarm, of, of, of fire that kills people, it just doesn't work at all. It does not see smoke. It's like, it's like um, being sold a, a, an airbag for a car that goes off 19 seconds after the accident. It is next to useless. It just will not save lives. It's, it, without going into all of the regulations and, and all of the, the um, deceptions that have gone into um, the production of ionisation alarms, suffice to say that uh, they won't pick up any fire until it's very late. They'll pick up flame, direct flame, and that's pretty much about it. They'll pick up cooking toast, you know, you think, well, it went off, I didn't even see the smoke. Gee, this is a great device. It works really well. You can be sleeping in your bed and the place is filled with smoke and that thing will just not go off. They should be banned. They should be made to be replaced right now. But right now, there's this bit of a leeway. You know, between now and, well, potentially 2027. But, uh, you know, let's say that you, because um, the new regulation started in uh, January 2017. So let's say you've just bought an ionisation detector. You bought it in December 2016. You can keep that thing in there for 10 years, as long as you press the button and it works. And that's where most testing companies, that's their procedure. They'll come in, look at the date. Yeah, it's not 10 years old. Eh, it is an ionisation alarm. Press the button, makes a bit of noise. Tick the box, out the door, checks in the mail. But they have no concern whatsoever for the fact that no one will be woken up by a fire from that device. It's just crazy. So what I encourage you to do, well and truly, if you care about your home, your family, your own life, you need to check the testing company uh, they, they'll come up with a report and it should say what type is on there. And if they've ticked the box next to an ionisation one, sack them. Get rid of them. Get in a photo optical alarm. We can, we can show you, we can send you uh, ways of identifying whether it is or it isn't. But in a simple, simple uh, format, if you turned it upside down and looked at it, if it's got a radioactive symbol there, uh, with three yellow sort of arms for radioactive, it's an ionisation detector. Get rid of it. It should have a P on it. It should be a P for photo optical. Because in truth, there is only one type of smoke alarm, and that is a photo optical. The other one is just a pretend device that sat there on the ceiling, and gives you a false impression that you are safe while you are sleeping. There is other types of alarms, heat alarms and carbon monoxide alarms, which we'll address in a different video. But my point today is that even though the regulations say that that thing can stay, if it's an ionisation detector, don't be fooled. It's not going to save your life. Replace it and replace it as soon as possible. It could very well be tonight that an incident happens and you do not want for the cost of such a small amount of cost. I mean, our, our charge for a whole year's annual servicing of smoke alarms, cleaning and testing, $86. How much is that a day? Is that worth it for the experience that we bring to the table? See, we really care about people surviving house fires. Our vision is that every home occupant is safe from fire and electrocution. So have a think about it. Have a look at your alarm. If you're not sure, I can send you photos. Just contact us. Um, get
get onto our website and have a look at, uh, at the information that we leave there. But please, if you know you've got an ionisation alarm, get rid of it as soon as possible. Thank you for listening.